Support for today's Tifo football video comes from Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming. Visit manscaped.com and use the promo code TIFO for 20% off and free shipping. Josep Maria Bartomeu will be remembered as one of the least popular Barcelona presidents ever. After taking over the Catalan club in 2014, Bartomeu has been forced out six years later. But as recently as 2013, most football fans had never even heard of him. So, how did Bartomeu climb to the top rung of the Barcelona ladder? And why did he come crashing back down again? Football wasn't Bartomeu's first love. It was basketball that was his preferred sport, and he played as a shooting guard in Barcelona's academy as a teenager. Yet he was cut by the club that he supported. From there, he moved to play basketball at Banca Catalana and then city rivals Espanyol. Later, he would play with local clubs as he began his studies in business administration at ESADE Business School. And it was there, at university, that the most important development in Bartomeu's rise to the Barca presidency took place. It was there that he became close friends with future president Sandra Russell. After graduating, Bartomeu entered the family business of industrial engineering and prospered, running a company that designed and manufactured boarding bridges and gangways. He eventually took over the family's business, converting it into a Delta group, one of the biggest and most successful in the world in its field. Bartomeu would become well-known among the Barcelona business elite and made many important friends. None was more important, however, than Russell. When the latter returned to Catalonia from Brazil in 2002, he and Bartomeu partnered with Joan Laporta and formed part of his successful bid for the Barca presidency in 2003. With their victory, Bartomeu assumed a position on the Barcelona board for the first time as the director in charge of basketball and the other non-footballing sections. He arrived with plenty of ambition, even promising to create a cycling team that would race in the Tour de France under the Barcelona name. That never happened. With basketball alone, Bartomeu had enough on his plate. In February of 2005, he selected Manolo Flores to become the new coach, and at the presentation, he criticised several of the decisions taken by the rest of the board the previous summer and even hit out at Laporta, suggesting he hadn't been able to get in touch with the president. Laporta was furious. And just a few days later, he took away Bartomeu's responsibilities, leaving him without any power at all. Rossell, meanwhile, wasn't happy either. And, in a move which linked them forever in the world of Barcelonismo, the two friends held a joint press conference on June 2, 2005, to resign from the board. Subsequently, when Rossell decided to stand in the 2010 Barcelona elections, Bartomeu was by his side. Rossell won convincingly with 61.35% of the votes, and he named his longtime friend as vice president. Now, for the first few years, Bartomeu remained in the shadows. But on January the 23rd, 2014, he was thrust into the limelight when Rossell resigned from his role as club president due to the legal questions surrounding the transfer of Neymar from Santos. With that, Bartomeu became president of one of the biggest football clubs in the world. Now, his fall didn't come immediately, but it was tough from day one. First of all, the new president had to deal with the controversy that had cost Rossell his job. Ultimately, the Neymar issue was solved when a deal was done with prosecutors in which Barcelona accepted legal responsibility for wrongdoings as an institution, while the individuals involved, including Bartomeu and Rossell, escaped punishment. But it wasn't his only difficulty. In April of 2014, Barcelona were given a transfer ban by FIFA for irregularities in the registration of underage players. Bartomeu actually responded well. Firstly, in Barcelona's next home match, he organised for a huge banner which read La Masia no es toca, or Don't Touch La Masia, and the fans were united in this sentiment. Barcelona appealed, but in anticipation of the ban being upheld, they signed important pieces such as Luis Suarez, Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, Claudio Bravo and Ivan Rakitic that summer, before serving the ban in the next two windows. That, of course, commenced the MSN era, and set the team up for a treble in 2014-15 under new coach Luis Enrique, who Bartomeu's board had hired to replace Tata Martino. Now, with that success came re-election. Bartomeu ran on a campaign of triplite y tridente, the treble and the trident, and it worked. The club members returned him with 54.63% of the vote. However, once the last piece of confetti fell to the ground, the problems really started. Barcelona began their two-window transfer ban. Then, 
Once they were able to sign again, the club began to spend heavily and erratically. On top of which, in the 2017 summer transfer window, PSG activated Neymar's release clause. In the following years, Ousmane Dembele, Philippe Coutinho and Antoine Griezmann were each signed for fees in excess of 100 million euros in unsuccessful attempts to fill the void. A further consequence was the rising wage bill, which grew to become the largest in Europe. Even though revenue also increased before the coronavirus pandemic, spending on wages hit 81% of revenue in 2019. UEFA's recommendations are for this to avoid surpassing 70%. So, with so many financial issues, Barcelona have struggled to move forward the Espe Barca stadium redevelopment project during Bartomeu's presidency, even as Real Madrid have been able to press ahead with their plans for the Bernabeu. In addition to the financial black marks, there have been social ones too. The theme of Bartomeu's presidency seemed to be the alienation of players, coaches, directors and club legends. At the time of his departure, he was on his fifth coach and his fifth sporting director in six years. Several directors have abdicated, while Neymar left and Messi wanted to leave too. Other players are known to be frustrated as well, and the playing squad even quite ungraciously nicknamed Bartomeu Nobita, after a character from the Japanese children's show Doraemon. The controversies escalated in 2020 and there was the messy firing of Ernesto Valverde and the hiring of Kike Setien after Xavi Hernandez rejected Bartomeu's approaches. There was the failure to solve the shortage in attack during the January transfer window that led to the emergency signing of Martin Braithwaite. There was the 13 Ventures scandal which saw Barcelona and the PR company both having to deny allegations that they paid a PR firm to spread negative narratives around certain current and former players before an independent investigation cleared them of wrongdoing followed by the awkward public row over player pay cuts during the coronavirus lockdown. And most publicly, there was Messi's criticism of Bartomeu's board and the notorious Burofax that followed. It was a breaking point. Elections were due in 2021 and Bartomeu wouldn't have been able to run again. But the supporters wanted him out and a motion of no confidence was filed against the president. With significant support, the Mesque Unamosia campaign comfortably surpassed the 16,521 signatures required to force a vote of no confidence, but it would never come to that. Before the vote could even take place, Bartomeu announced on October 27, 2020, that he and the rest of the board of directors would resign. Speaking at a press conference, Bartomeu reflected on his time in charge and told the media that people have asked me if all this was really worth it, and, in fact, it has been an honour to serve my club in this capacity, but today we are obliged to resign. And that was the end. Bartomeu's fall was complete. Today's video was brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped is now available in the UK, and suddenly we all have access to the tools for the job. Tools such as their Lawn Mower 3.0, an electric trimmer, which features a, a cutting-edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents, uh, and of course also their Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer. You can now keep your nose and ear hair looking clean-shaven. Would you like to do that, Seb? I certainly would. As I get older, that gets more important, definitely. And as you get older, yeah, that's you're right, because your hair and the nose and the ears gets longer, and, and the head shrinks, doesn't it? Sure does. Alex, did you know that the battery for uh, the uh, the lawnmower 3.0 lasts up to 90 minutes, so you can take a longer shave, and I believe that that would be useful for you. That, that would be very useful. I have a lot of body hair. So, of course, both of these flagship items come inside the Manscaped Performance Package, along with other quality products like their athletic boxer briefs, Seb. Oh, lovely. Well, you can get 20% off and free shipping by visiting manscaped.com and entering the promo code TIFO. Yes, that's 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with the promo code TIFO. So that's good quality raises at a reasonable price with 20% off with free shipping. Fantastic. And of course, you know, Alex, next week will be as smooth as a bowling ball, knocking down those pins, hey, Alex? There's an image for you. <laughs> 